All right, everyone, Major Tom here, coming back at you with another episode. We're going to keep this really quick. So yesterday and this morning, we were predicting that the market was going to open green. It did. We saw a huge pump coming into the morning and then a big tank following it afterwards. The reason for that pump, like I said, I thought the CPI data was already kind of priced into the market this week. But we're gonna, we got a couple things to talk about besides the CPI data and um, my predictions. Let's get started with Russia shutting down Gulfstream 1 and what that means for Europe, okay? So Russia shutting down Gulfstream 1, which is a natural gas pipeline, okay? It has gas implications, but mostly it's natural gas, right? So natural gas is what provides electricity. Um, it, it also takes sulfur out of diesel to make diesel be usable. So that's going to have gas implications, it's going to cause gas to go up on diesel prices. And it's also potentially going to cause gas prices to go up as people rush to use gasoline to fuel electric generators, stuff like that in Europe. Um, potentially could cause a huge, huge squeeze on the energy market in Europe when this shuts down. Um, AMC, GameStop, Bed Bath & Beyond is the next topic I wanna to talk on. Oh, before I move away from Russia, I wanted to add this in. Um, shutting down Gulfstream 1 doesn't cut off the entire supply of natural gas to Europe, okay? It cuts off a pretty big supply of it, okay? But they're not going to be natural gas less, okay? A move like that would be dumb for Russia because like 50 to 75% of Russia's GDP or their like nation's currency is created based off of oil and natural gas, okay? So if they shut down all gas entirely to Europe, the country would basically go poor while they're already being sanctioned by just about every other country in NATO. So um, wouldn't be a smart move for Russia to shut it down entirely. I think this is their way of kind of like showing NATO how important their relationship is. And um, it's gonna be really, really interesting to see the energy crunch that happens based off of this. You might actually see like houses in certain parts of Europe get completely shut down because certain parts of Europe could be powered by um, the Gulf Stream 1 pipeline and, you know, it could be running off of like a natural gas electricity plant, etc. Um, you see AMC, GameStop, and Bed Bath & Beyond, right? They spiked like crazy the last few days and we have to talk about this, all right? So let's take a little look at a long position here just to measure how high AMC has gone up in the last few days. We had a 26% run and then a small dip. And then today we had a 14% run. Okay, so not small numbers. Over the last couple days, this thing is up 32% total. Okay, so it had about a similar run to Bed Bath & Beyond back here when Bed Bath & Beyond ran 32% and then pulled back and now it's slowly gapping back up. All right, if we look at GameStop, GameStop is still pushing up based on their announcement of the dividend split that's going on where every share of GameStop is going to be turned into um, four shares via a dividend. So it's not a normal stock split. And um, also this, Gap down was the CFO leaving, a new CFO was appointed. It immediately regained momentum. And right about here, we had the NFT market release and all day today it's been running, okay? Whenever one meme stock tends to run or has a lot of news, all the other meme stocks were to follow and I believe that's what we're seeing here. If the meme stocks are inside of a basket or they're being shorted via an ETF to avoid short interest reporting, this could be the reason why they all run together. We've already talked about this and the various reasons why they all run together. Um, but what everyone's really curious of as to is basically where are, where are these stocks going to? When are they going to stop running? So I'm actually gonna take a look at GameStop here, right? So interestingly enough, we have a bunch of these put opportunities where afterwards we see the stock tank for a short period of time. But if you notice, the market maker almost never lets GameStop get oversold anymore. There's not many call entries on the chart. 
because the market maker is not letting this get oversold, which tells me they're not done letting this stock run, okay? So I do believe that this is gonna keep gapping. It might see a down day if the overall market tanks, but I don't think it's going to tank that hard. In fact, this might just keep squeezing upwards as more stuff gets released from the marketplace. I know that GameStop recently uh, dropped their NFT marketplace. I'll be very blunt and frank. I'm not really huge into the whole NFT idea. I don't think that a um, paying money for a JPEG is a smart thing to do as a consumer, but a lot of people love doing it. Um, in fact, GameStop in the last 24 hours has traded over $2 million on their, um, on their NFT marketplace just on artwork or JPEGs. Um, but that's not what interests me in the stock. What interests me is the marketplace being able to play NFT games and then buying games, trading used digital games on the marketplace, also trading skins and in-game content on the marketplace as well that can be used inside of future games and also their partnerships with big companies like Microsoft that might come out, stuff like that. Um, we know that they've been in talks with Microsoft. We know that there's a lot of big companies that they've been in talks with. If one of those partnerships gets announced, you can expect a 10% run at least. Also, if you, uh, if you see the gaming portion of the NFT marketplace get released, expect a big run from that as well. Um, you know, NFTs are one thing, but when you have hundreds of thousands of people buying a game for $4 or $10, the money starts to add up very quickly, you understand? So that's what I'm more anticipating for the stock than just the NFT marketplace itself. It is really, really cool that it's released, but I'm still very bullish on meme stocks. In fact, if you look at AMC and if you look at Bed Bath & Beyond, they printed calls again at the close. And if these two stocks are being used as a hedge, since they run with GameStop, then it could be the market makers buying calls here, but it does look like the calls for GameStop are too expensive to even be purchased when it's running, which is uh, quite interesting on this go around. I actually haven't seen this before on GameStop and I thought I'd point it out because um, it's, it's pretty significant. Moving on from the whole meme stocks, we're gonna talk about the airline pump today. So this is American Airlines, okay? And we haven't really talked about the CPI report yet. I'm gonna dive in deep for the CPI report in a little bit, but let's kind of rewind this back to June 10th of um, last month. June 10th of last month, the May CPI report came out. And basically what we're facing tomorrow is the June CPI report where everyone gets to see if inflation got worse or not. Okay, the results of the CPI report back here dropped airline stocks all the way down eventually to their all-time 52-week lows of $9 and, or sorry, $11.93. I'm using American Airlines as a comparison, but all the airline stocks look the same. This is what the chart looks like, okay? That's what, basically what I'm telling you. So, what I'm pointing out is immediately after the CPI report comes out, airline stocks balance out at $13. Now I'm gonna draw a line at $13 because I have something interesting to point out here. When we opened today, airline stocks were trading at or around $13, which tells me that the $13 price for airline stocks was already priced in this morning, but someone, for some reason or some way, decided that airline stocks was going were going to be worth $2 more per share or if we're talking percentage based decided today that airline stocks are worth 15% ish above where they were already priced in at for the CPI report now this is what i foresee happening if the CPI report is bad or if gas prices go up or just a straight up retracement of airline stocks. You're gonna see this, why? Because if the CPI report comes out to be 8.8% inflation or worse, you're going to see the same movement happen. Now, again, if we look at the percentage here, you're talking about 15%. If you're playing derivatives like we're playing, that's 150% change. You want to capture that. So what do you think we did today? We bought puts after the airline stock started to run. 
and we bought these puts, we made sure that we bought them above the critical level of $15, okay? $15 is a good psychological level. When people start seeing stocks fall below $10 increments or $5 increments, it starts to cause panic. And we started to almost see that right here. The second it dropped below $15, you saw it recede all the way back to $14.79 before it tried to find footing and couldn't, okay? One of the things that I also wanted to point out about airline stocks here is there was no reason for this run today. No reason at all. No news. Nothing. So what does that tell me? It tells me that the stock is already guaranteed to pretty much pull back to like 60% of this run. Right? So I'm already expecting off of a good CPI report, the airline stocks to naturally go back and settle around $14 per share, which is right here, which means that if you enter on these puts, you're essentially still going to make money. And that's kind of what I judged this entry on here as well. Um, I, the, I, like any way that I see this, I see the airline stocks betting against them after today to just be a no brainer. What better way to play against the market if you think there's going to be a bearish CPI report than betting against a bunch of airline stocks that do terrible in CPI reports when they're up 15% on the day? It's like a guaranteed play almost. And um, it's stuff like this that's just going to blow your portfolio to the next level, all right? Um, so that's that's kind of my position on airline stocks. No idea why they ran, don't think they deserve to run, and in best case scenario, I think we're going to see a small pullback here from where they ran at today. And that's a perfect opportunity to capture if you're trying to make money on the downside, and that's what we're doing. All right, moving on to the next topic, um, CPI data. So the consumer price index, um, basically all the banks for this go around. So tomorrow, all the big banks are predicting an 8.8 .8 average for inflation. Okay. So what does that mean? It means at current prices for the SPY, this price right here that we're seeing right now, right? That price is fair value for 8.8% .8 inflation. All right. But you might be thinking to yourself, 8.8% .8 is worse than the 8.6% over here. And my answer to you is, yes, that's right. But over here, they weren't expecting 8.6%. Over here, they're expecting 8.8%. So what I'm telling you is, um, the leaked date also, there was a leak on the CPI report itself. The leak showed that the CPI report data showing 10%. Okay, so 10% is higher than what the big banks were expecting. Um, the market back in May, or the SPY, tanked all the way down to the 52 week low for SPY, which is about $363 per share. Okay, and why that number is important is because basically what I'm trying to point out here is if this report is 10% or worse, in my opinion, you could see it go back to that 52 week low, maybe even break the 52 week low and continue on a bear trend this way. And that would be very, very bad for the overall market and basically cause a market crash. All right. However, if you see that the CPI data is around 8.8% in any capacity, you are probably going to see one of these. And the reason why I say that is because, remember, 8.8% is already priced in at the current price of 378, okay? So remember, 8.8% .8 is already priced in. If it's not worse than 8.8%, more than likely, we're going to rebound. One other thing that I'd like to point out is the similarities between the beginning of this CPI report and the beginning of the last CPI report. So before the last CPI report, the SPY went down about 2.5%. Before this CPI report, the SPY also went down exactly 2.5%. And these yellow lines mark the announcement of the report. Notice after the report, the SPY came all the way down to the 52 week low and after this line, we might see something similar if the report is bad, where this showed a 12% drop. This might also show a 12% drop, 
which would make my estimate of the SPY pricing, if it's a bad report, to be around the 337 dollar price range before it finds its feet again, before it decides that it's a fair value again. That's where I'm pricing SPY if the report is bad. If the report trades sideways or is better than 8.8% or less than 8.8%, I'm expecting SPY to do one of these, which would probably place SPY back at $400, right about there. Which one of these do I think is going to happen? This one. There's a couple reasons why. All right, we still have a gap to fill at $400, first of all. Second of all, it, they're more expecting the index to be bad this time, whereas last time it was a huge surprise that it was terrible. This time, they're sort of expecting it to be bad, and the weird thing about this announcement is the White House came out before this announcement and said how they're expecting the CPI data to be terrible. The other thing is the entire media is pushing this narrative that the data and the CPI and inflation is completely out of control. However, being a consumer, walking around, buying things like every day, like food, buying oil, etc., I've kind of noticed that the prices have started to stabilize or go down in the month of July. Granted, this report is only reporting what happened in the month of June, but I personally still think the CPI data, A, I think the leak data is fake. B, I think the media is spinning a narrative that the CPI data is worse than what it actually is. And uh, C, I think that at the current price, a lot of inflation's already priced in. If the report comes out to be around 8.8, .8, which I think is going to happen, I think we're going to see a big market rally. And historically, just speaking from the charts, the market tends to go up, okay? So it's designed to go up. You're, you're like, if you're betting on the SPY, you know, 70% of the time, if you're betting um, calls, you're going to be right, okay? So, be very, very careful getting too bearish and following what the media says, because almost never will the media call an event to happen. And I think that there's a big possibility tomorrow that we might see a big bull rally, and a lot of people that are betting against the stock or against the overall market might get crushed on the pivot. So, I also preached in the Discord how even though I had great, great Snapchat calls and they were bought back here, how that before this CPI report up here, I let them go for a small profit. Why? Because whenever there's a market making event like this, it's very, very risky to try and pick a side. And if you're on the wrong side of this event, it could blow up your entire portfolio. So make sure before these events happen that you're playing both sides. Currently, we've invested in weed sector calls and we're playing airline puts. The reason why airline puts are still a good play, even if you expect the market to rebound or trade sideways, is because they were up 15% today. So it's not like you're exposing yourself to a whole lot of risk. There's a natural pullback that's likely to occur anyways, and the airlines have been the topic of a lot of bad things lately between flight cancellations and high gas prices. It's natural to bet against the airlines, okay? When it comes to the weed sector, it's at an all-time low, so it's natural to bet for the weed sector to go up. Either way I look at it, the two positions that I'm currently in that are not cash in my small, um, my small market or small portfolio challenge are safe relatively safe from the overall market movements, okay? Keep that in mind when you're positioning your portfolio into these big market events and always stay on your toes and keep up with the talk, 
topics of discussion. So speaking of weed, we're going to look at Tilray, okay? So today, Tilray actually started started changing along with the rest of the weed sector, okay? We bought calls back here. The stock kind of traded downwards, but overall, it's been sort of a liquid lately. Uh, today, we saw Tilray at a market high go up to about 5.5%. And our calls were actually in the green at the peak right here, which was actually kind of nice to see again. However, it started trending back down with the overall market when there was fears about the CPI data tomorrow. Okay, we see this little down slide right here. Now, what I wanted to bring up with the weed sector as a whole, okay? The last low for the weed sector was at about $3 on Tilray, okay? And if you look at this, this major slump right here happened because of CPI data. So believe it or not, CPI data affects weed stocks. All right. So that caused kind of the first all time low. Now, if you look at this, whenever it gets close to this all time low line, you have massive rallies like this, 7%, like this, 10%, like this, 15%, and like this, 22%, okay? Now, if you're holding two-week out calls right here, and it seems like there's no way they're going to come in the money, I want to remind you of these calls back here, okay? The stock round up 16% in one week from getting close to the all-time low. And what happened when it got close? There were these calls. Now, what happened when it got close again over here? We start seeing these calls again. I'm still very, very bullish that if it gets anywhere in these levels, you're going to start seeing a strong, strong day where it pulls up like this. And remember, this was in one day time frame. The weed sector can pull 16% gains in a single day. And that's what we're looking for here. It's very, very risky to try and time the weed sector to bounce off of this line again because it might not get that low is what i'm saying so that's why i played calls right here and if it does get this low or this low i'm still expecting a 15 percent run on one of these days which will still make these calls worth a lot of money okay so that's again why we're playing weed stocks why i'm bullish on the weed stock sector right now and um unless all the weed companies that I have in this watch list decide to go bankrupt at the same exact time, um, short sellers aren't going to be able to bankrupt all these companies at once. And betting on a big company like Tilray is a good idea if you're trying to play the sector turnaround. So that's what we're doing. Well, as always, thanks for tuning in. That's my ideas for how the market's gonna play out tomorrow. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section down below. As always, join the Discord for free plays and also to use my algorithm. I'm still giving away for free. Um, you'll see that in the Discord as well. It's in pinned messages in the general chat. Again, if you have any questions, just reach out on Discord. I'm pretty reachable there and all the other um, people inside the Discord are super friendly, super helpful. Thanks for tuning in again. And as always, stay frosty and watch that CPI report tomorrow. Peace.